As any good computer technician knows, it is not at all unusual to discover that the problem with a computer can be located between the keyboard and the chair. Greetings, friends. Today we are disassembling and repairing some hinge problems on an HP Envy Touch Smart 17 notebook PC. The exact model is 17T looks like J100. As usual, battery out. Need to get this door off so we can see all the screws. It looks like there are probably screws hidden under the feet, which I can't stand, but that's what they do, man. That's what they do. So we'll put that over there. Let's go ahead and get this out of my way as well. I have some other supplies here we'll get to in just a minute. Okay. First, before we go any further, do we have screws hidden under the feet? Uh, that feels like they might be. And the answer to that question is yes. There is... Uh, that's gross. Okay. This sticky stuff is just nasty. And it's covering the hole. Ugh. Yep, there are screws hidden under the feet. Of course there are. All right, let's get these feet up in the back here. There may or may not be screws hidden in the front feet as well. Um, I doubt it. But we're going to check all four. Just to be sure. Front feet? Nope, none under the front feet. So, screws under the back. Ooh, this is interesting. I have never, ever actually opened a laptop that had two hard drives. So I wonder if these, they look identical. I wonder if they're rated together. Well, heh, that would be interesting. So, uh, let's go ahead. We need to do the hinges, but... Um, Let's see. Let's leave the hard drives in for now. Let's go ahead and start taking screws. Oof. Yep. That that's not good. Uh, yeah, these hinge screws just they're so loose, they just come right out. Go ahead and take the optical drive screw and drive out. The screw is shorter. So, make a note of that. The optical drive screw is shorter. <clears throat> there are some screws under the optical drive and they're even shorter so you we've already gone up to three sizes of screw that you'll have to keep separated and it's gonna get up to four I think because we also have um, tiny screws back here but we'll get to that screws under the optical drive three of them I knew it. Continue around the case. They're probably the same as the hinge. Actually, that's the same size as the optical drive screw. The hinge screws may be the only truly long ones. Let's find out. Well, that's the same as the optical. <clears throat> Just going around, taking all the screws out. There is some consistency. This is good. This is good because it means we don't have to do too much memorization as to where... Uh-oh. Nope. There's a long screw by the network card. Ah, <sighs> whatever. That's too bad. There's a screw in this hole, and it's a shorter screw. So the long screws so far have been by the nick and the two hinges. Anywhere you see one of these little arrows, you may have difficulty seeing it. Here, let me show you. Anywhere you see one of these arrows like this is a screw hole you need to remove a screw from. All right. Let me get you some more brightness, okay? There you go. A little bit more. And there are quite a few of these. It looks like the vast majority of these screws are going to be this middle size. And it's astonishing just how many there really are. To get to the hinges, you've got to get this top and bottom separated. 
this is one of the classic oh I've already gotten that one classic HP designs the older type um, this is Windows 8 so this is back before they started switching over to unibody style construction where there's just a big back plate um, and the keyboard is the frame this is this would be one of the computers where the keyboard is not the frame it is either part of the top plate or it slides in to the top of the top plastics is there one down here this seems to claim that there is but did I already get it I did indeed there are three four right there and then there are some tiny ones here let me make sure I got everything here yes okay <coughs> excuse me so four more it's you just unscrew just constantly unscrew this that and the other unscrewing for days this is so boring I really don't like the way that these older computers are put together because the unibody design for all its flaws you know the keyboard being hard to replace um, it is much easier to get into now one of these tiny screws just came right out I didn't even touch it oh, oh that one came out too now that last one yeah that one did not come right out so let's Let's see if a number zero Phillips will get it out. Will a number zero work? No, a number zero Phillips does not work. Do I even have a double zero Phillips over here? It's actually a real good question. Do I? That's a star bit. No, I mean a pentalobe. That's a pentalobe. Uh, you know, I may not have a double zero Phillips over here. I may have to get a bit. That actually looks like it is a double zero Phillips. Come on, bad boy. Yep, double zero Phillips worked. They are very tiny screws and they're not held in with very much. So, let's see. Keyboard. Let's see how the keyboard comes out. This is where things usually start getting interesting. Oof, you hear that hinge? It's already ripping. Um, it actually, I think the keyboard's a separate part, but I'm not entirely sure just how that comes out. So, and it may be that it doesn't come out through the top. In fact, I mean, it's screwed down, but it's not sliding. Um, the keyboard appears to probably be part of this top plate. So let's go ahead. What we're going to do is pry. Uh-oh. Well, the hinge is already kind of doing it for me. And it looks like this actually is designed in such a way that it's a bottom plate style setup. So we do need to take some things out. <coughs> CMOS battery is stuck to it these hard drives are stuck to it and I think in the name of expedience I am you know what here let's just pull up uh, leave the cable if we can for that one at least um, the other one though is glued so we may yet have to remove that alright drive here and then there's another drive here and there are more screws under the drives, too, so that's fun. All right. And this cable's glued down, but we can peel it up. It'll be okay. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure about that. I don't know. There's multiple ways to do this. Um, these are just flip-lock connectors. You can just take the cable out. Uh, I don't really know about that, but yeah, let's go ahead and just take this one, too. I'm... I'm not super duper worried about that. CMOS battery I'd like to leave. Alright, the Wi-Fi card's not part of the case there. Um, we have more screws under the hard drives. Those appear to be the short type. Let's go ahead and pull these. Come on, get out. 
pull these screws. Oh man, there's a lot of them. There are five of them, it looks like. Five short screws underneath the hard drives, and that should free up this bottom case. And those hinges are clearly in really bad shape. The actual hinges are, are probably fine, but whew, uh, there is one screw that I missed right here. See? Doesn't matter how long you do this, you're bound to miss a screw every once in a while. Okay. I see that there is a speaker wire still connected. Let's, uh, yep, okay. You will need to disconnect this speaker wire here. This one here. Show you, right here. And I like to do it with a metal tool like this. Just pull back, and there's your wire. Now, see how it floats up? Uh, and we have one more. The CD drive has a little flip lock here. I'm going to remove the top one because it's easier to put back. And, oh, uh, it just continues. There's yet another. This must go to that Beats speaker. So beside the wireless card, beside the wireless card, ooh, this can be hard to show you. Over here, beside the wireless card, there's a teeny tiny little white connector for the beat speaker the subwoofer if you can call it that and there's nothing else holding it so that's good okay ooh look at that I'm seeing red so we are in <clears throat> now let's talk hinges and hinge damage shall we so this hinge over here feels like it's not great. This hinge over here that you can't see because the camera's too low. Hold on. Let's kick this up just a notch. Come on. You can focus. It's okay. All right. This hinge over here is just bad. It's completely broken. Yeah. I can feel it. So let's see if there are any screws left. I think there actually is a screw. Re nope, that broke too. As soon as I tried to turn it, it broke. What about this one? This screw feels like it's tight. This screw feels like it's the only one that's holding this hinge down. And I'm pretty sure it is. Because, yeah. Yeah, the hinge is very strong, but all the hinge mounts have broken. Uh-oh. What's this? Why is there a mount here? Oh, that's just that's just not okay. Come on, man. No, come on. Oh, look at all this dust here. All this plastic garbage. Uh, smack my microphone. I'm so upset. <clears throat> so um <laughs> Yeah, this is this is in pretty bad shape. That one's tight, that one's tight, that one's not. So, we uh, get some pliers maybe, if I can find the things. There they are. Pliers. All right, let's see if I can show this to you. Here, get it a little bit centered and show you what I'm doing here. All right. So this here, right? Get in the hole. There you go, buddy. Hold the anchor with the pliers while you tighten the screw down. Oof, is that bent? I hope that's the way that's supposed to be because sure will be a tragedy if it's not. So the one that broke loose here appears to be the one that actually goes to the hinge. So that's unfortunate. So there really was only one anchor truly holding this together. That is that is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Well, I'm going to take one hinge screw and uh I'm going to put it in here. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should put it through. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. 
I just need to align this. So I'm pretty much just going to fuse these hinges together because chances are pretty good. I'm not going to have too much to worry about as far as servicing this computer in the future. So we will. Uh... Wow, that really is rough. Let's see, let's see. All right. I got some thermal grease on it. Okay. Let's zoom back out and take a better look here. The overall project is a real pain. So we need to get a screw through here. You know what? Maybe I'm maybe I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not sure, but this is not looking good for anybody. All right. I have an anchor. I have a screwdriver. Get the screwdriver on the screw. Come on. Get the screwdriver on the screw. Screwdriver on the screw. There you go. Are we turning? No, we were not actually on the screw head. Let's crank this forward a little. There we go. There we go. Now we're turning. Okay. Get that there. Get this anchor. One way or another, I need to get it on. Come on. Come on, come on. Doesn't have to be perfect. And ideally, the screw shouldn't even really poke all the way through but it needs to be there to align everything it looks like oof actually all right i need to find out for sure before i dedicate too much to this where is that screw overall okay so well that's trashed so that's not very useful huh yeah, all right. The one the one that goes through the case is right here. It's gone. Um, so I'll just go ahead and shoot this one through too, I suppose. While we're in here, we'll go ahead and reinforce that last one, too. All right. So now we're going to need to epoxy some stuff. But before we do that, let's get this other one figured out. There is a lot going on here. All right. Hand screw. Let's go ahead and get these out and see what kind of damage we may have on this other side. It looks like it uses different sizes, so be careful. Be very careful. Okay. So how bad is this one? Are these hinge mounts broken at all? Are they? Are they? Who knows? Well, they don't look like it. Mm, I'm not seeing any damage on this side, really. Yeah, so I think this side, this side will just tighten, but otherwise leave it alone. Okay. I think this side's okay, and the other side is smashed. So let's go ahead and put the screws back in for this side. Nice and tight. Yeah, I don't think these anchors are bad on this side at all they're holding up pretty well yeah you don't want to tighten too much but a little bit a little bit tighter than just snug seems to be just fine while I'm in here let's check a few of these other screws that are going to these plates yeah they all feel a little loose actually can't say I'm surprised 
Yeah, that one's okay. Um, about the touchpad screws here. I mean, you may as well check everything while you're in here. Um, I also had heard what sounded like a CPU fan noise. That could have been due to the hinges. So while we're in here looking at all this other stuff before we get any epoxy out, maybe we check the CPU fan. See if uh, maybe this fan is bad or if there's something clogging it. I don't really see any clogs. It, it looks fine. It seems to spin fairly decently. No, nah, but I do feel a... seems like a bearing noise. Hang on. Let's blow it. Hmm. I don't have enough air pressure. Put my ear up to it, see what I hear. Mm, yeah, that was gross. Yeah, I don't I don't know if the fan is bad or not, really. There we go. Listen. Yeah, I don't I don't hear any bearing sound. It seems to be okay. So whatever's making the fan noise, it's probably related to the hinge. Oh look, that weird metal frame. There's a screw right underneath the fan. What a shock. Oh, and it's loose. What a double shock. And there's also a screw under the heat sink, but I don't know if I can get to that. Eh. You know what? I'm not... I'm not sure if I want to break the seal on that grease to get down to that. Oh, decisions. It's a pickle. It's a pickle, Terry. Good lord. Uh, I'll just check all these other screws just because this this computer does not appear to have had the best um, the best time overall. Yeah, it has a few things that are not looking so comfy. All right. So we can probably safely put this back. I'm done with the pliers. I'm getting them out of the work area. Yeah. All right. Let's put this CPU fan back where it belongs. Put all the where the screw go. There it is. Okay. Now. Now comes the the fun part the part you've all been waiting for and by you all I mean you get a big fat super sticky note I always use post-it super sticky brand I'll uh, show you that real quick look at that look at that beautiful super sticky brand um, I love these things no sponsorship but hey you know if post-it wants to give me some money to tell the people how awesome I think their product is um, get in touch with me. I'm, I'll be happy to take your money. So let's do this thing. We have epoxy here. Ah, yummy. Very yummy. It's two part plastic bonding epoxy that never seems to come out evenly. Ever. And I like to pull back on it to release the pressure. There we go. Good to go. Let's put this up. Shouldn't need any more than that. Now this... Ooh, by the way, ventilation. Oh, man. Ooh. This is a just a cotton swab. There's nothing super special about this. Just a cotton swab. And uh, I've cut one end off of it. Mix up the epoxy resin and hardener, so you get some nice stiff, uh, chunky epoxy. I actually think I made far too much, but whatever. I'm not super worried about that right now. It's really more important that I have enough to work with. Okay, so get you a little dab of this stuff and. 
Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. Well, you probably can't see what I'm doing, but that that's just that's just the way it is, I guess. Let me move these hard drives. Keep the order. There we go. All right. Now you can see what I'm doing a little bit. So under the hinge here, these areas are where the anchors go and the screws, and I'm basically just permanently gluing it together. Because we've had basically all the anchors rip out, this whole area is clearly not really designed well enough to accommodate the forces of the hinges as they age. So we're going to have to tighten it up a little bit. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Get a bunch of epoxy down in the holes there. Uh, chunks of plastic are coming back up. And that's that's always fun. All right. Look at that. That's so gross, isn't it? Isn't that just gross? Let me get you some more light. Alright. I don't like it. I don't like it. Mm. Yeah, that hole needs an anchor. I think a noise is about to go off. Let's see. Oh, oh someone left another comment on that stupid video that I made. Uh, I, mm. Every once in a while I just get tired of reading dumb comments. You know, if you're going to watch my stupid political videos, you really should understand that they're stupid political videos and probably treat them as stupid political videos while you watch them. And you know what? When you get done watching it, if you think that was stupid, that's cool. If all you're going to do is say, I think you're dumb, or some snobby, heavily worded... I wish I was intelligent version of that. Don't bother commenting. You know, the only thing that's going to happen is the series that I'm working on, don't read the comments. Um, I'm, I'm just going to feature your dumb comment. And I'm going to mock you in front of the entire internet. Because, you know, leaving a comment saying you're dumb is dumb doesn't help anybody. You want to argue with me? Fine. But you better be well researched, my friend. Well researched, indeed. <clears throat> and simply saying stupid things at me until I stop responding to you because I don't have time and you apparently do? Yeah, that's, uh... That's not winning, dude. That's just not winning. You think it's winning. It's not winning. You don't win an argument by yelling until the other guy walks away. Um, that doesn't mean that it, it can't be a lot of fun to yell until the other guy walks away, mind you. Yeah, I am worried about this anchor in particular being one of the few that I'm not having to put epoxy back on. The other side of that is I worry that the plastic is going to disintegrate around it. And that uh, it'll just be a bad day all around. Okay, need to get this back down. This is not easy, getting these hinges to go back down. The amount of force, the, just the sheer amount of force that these things can handle. Uh, that looks bent to me. That really, it really looks bent to me. I don't know that that's supposed to be bent like that, actually. I don't know that I can bend it back either, though, so... I wonder if the guy dropped it. I mean, it, it kind of looks like it just got dropped, and the hinge popped, and... You know, maybe it's not a design defect on HP's part. Maybe the design defect is the dude dropped his computer. Which is not a problem with the machine from the factory. But rather, it's a problem with the operator making it an error and uh, as any good computer technician knows it is not at all unusual to discover that the problem with the computer can be located between the keyboard and the chair 
this hinge is not going back. It just, it isn't going back in position. And uh, I'm not entirely sure why. One of these screws doesn't look like the others too, but I wonder if that's why. Now, I didn't take that screw out, so that actually cannot be the problem. Oh. That, mm. Can we get this bent back at all? See, I'm not a metal worker. I don't have any of the big fancy bendy crap. Mm. I got it bent back a little. Not a lot, but a little. You can use that other hole to figure out the alignment, but good lord, it just it isn't wanting to go in at all. This is it's kind of kinky, really. <clears throat> yep, it's stuck. It won't go in. This is a bit of an issue. Just a little bit of a friggin' issue. you got to be kidding me, dude. So why? Is it that anchor that I put in? Is that screw too long for that hole? Uh, what's going on here? See, the problem is right now the epoxy resin is hardening. So I am... I need to do a little exploratory poking here, figure out what's going on there. You know, I'm starting to think maybe that doesn't go where I thought it went. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this screw, because I'm starting to think it doesn't go there. After all, this is going to get messy. But I'd rather have it not there, if it doesn't belong there, than have it harden in place. And maybe screwed. Ha! Huh, literally. Alright. Since this thing's absolutely decked out with resin now. Um, yeah, I'm going to have some problems. Okay. This is, this is one of the more difficult ones that I've had to do. And actually, I'm uh, real glad I'm filming this. Real glad I'm filming this. Because this has been a bit of a pain. Was that it? No, that still doesn't feel like it's the one doing it. Or maybe it is going down and I'm just not seeing it. Mm. All right, well, let's, um, let's pop a screw in there and see what happens. Hmm. It's a little off, I think. I may actually end up having to do some kind of clamping to get this to work right. It just doesn't quite feel right to me. Regardless of anything else, it just doesn't quite feel right. Now, uh, let's go ahead and put the long screw that goes here. I know we don't have the case and all, but the case is broken anyway, so let's go ahead and put this in. And we've got this other one. Yeah, it looks like it actually went in okay. Looks like our problem is over here with this post. Something's wrong with this post right here. Yeah, something's weird about that post right there. And I don't know what, but so be it whatever you know it's down now it's pretty darn tight so and I don't think we need to epoxy anything else so I'm gonna go ahead and just yeah you probably didn't see any of that I didn't realize I had moved it away from the camera so I'm sorry um, I had a lot of trouble with this so maybe I just edited out something you know maybe you just saw a flash and didn't see my handiwork and I'm glad if you didn't because it was terrible bottom line um, I had to use screws to shove it all back together it it was ugly eh, who knows how it'll hold up but we'll see okay reassembly let's talk reassembly alright the view is a little different now than it was earlier. Remember we have this Beats wire and see if I can show you a little more clearly. 
we have this wire here for the speakers here all right we'll put the speaker wire in here we have the beats wire here that goes right beside the wireless card actually kind of hard to move that around with a finger because it's so tiny um, the CMOS battery let's not forget the CMOS battery before you go clipping things down it needs to come back out from underneath and it goes back here where it had been originally let's go ahead and clip squeeze to get all these plastic clips to engage if you watched any of my other repair videos you know how much I hate plastic clips can't stand the things um, probably gonna just use screws to get all these plastic clips engaged again so let's go ahead and start doing that let's get a hinge screw in here to hold that hinge down a little better this other long screw goes by the Ethernet and that is the end of the long screws so I don't have to deal with that I already put this screw back in earlier because I didn't have much of a choice all right, save hopefully some of the adhesive is still there from ripping these off and you can put the feet back over these screws okay let's go ahead and get some of these more structural screws put in place so that we can kinda get the machine to snap back together I'm just gonna start putting screws in and keep doing it until I run out there are so many of these screws, it's ridiculous. Okay, those actually are the really short kind, so that's that's not correct. Okay, let's do that one instead. Okay. I know that all these outer case screws are the, not the longest, but the second longest kind. In fact, um, that one looks shorter than the other ones beside it, I think. How frustrating. So I may have made an error there, I'm not sure. Anywho, all the outer case screws except for this one by the Ethernet are definitely long, um, longer. These ones with the arrows under the plate and the ones in the battery bay are the longer ones not the longest but the longer and the shorter ones go into the CD drive and in these drive trays Jeez, you can still smell the epoxy it's terrible I actually got very nauseous once when I was doing this um, due to the epoxy you know I would actually like to put the CD drive back in Let's go ahead and get the tiny screws here. Not the teeny tiny screws, but the short screws under the CD drive area. That will also force the plastics to snap back together. If they haven't already. Alright. Snug tight. Maybe plus a tiny bit. There we go. That's those. Um, while I'm doing that, I might as well go ahead and get these drive tray ones put back. Mm. So in summary, you have eight of these short screws, and they go under the CD drive, DVD drive, whatever, and the two hard drives. Pretty easy to remember. Three teeny tiny screws that take a double zero Phillips that go in the battery area but you'll probably want to put bigger screws in place before you attempt to put the little screws and I'm putting one of those bigger ones here um, two of the three had backed out on this customers computer so that wasn't doing him any favors so I've already put that screw in so let's put this one in okay all right, let's get the teeny tiny screws real quick, just so that they're done and out of the way. Yeah, that's definitely a double zero Phillips. I was certainly correct about that. 
all this hinge flexing has made them uh, fall apart. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay. I have three more screws. Where do they go? Well, the reason I wanted to put the optical drive stuff back in place is so I can put the optical drive back in and see where that tab comes out. Oh, now that's not good. I didn't do that. That drive was like that already. That's wonderful. So this guy actually has a broken optical drive. Oh, come on. These optical drive faceplates are so not fun to put back together. There's a big flat tab over here that is broken. Damn, where's that epoxy? Maybe I can... Yeah, it is kind of floppy. Um, if that epoxy has not hardened enough... If that epoxy's still good... Oh, God, it's bad. Okay. Oh, no. No, it's ruined. It's ruined. It's too late. It's already hardened quite a bit. Crud. Crud. Okay. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do... Ah... <sighs> What I'll probably do is put a piece of tape, like scotch tape, you know, clear tape between this door and the tray when I get the computer all the way back together. In the meantime, let's just carefully put the drive back in. Uh, and of course, I promptly lost the screw that was on the screwdriver. And I have found the screw that was on the screwdriver. There we go. There's only three screws left anyway. So let's just go ahead and parcel them out. Where did they go? One went here. Ah, very nice. So the arrows, the uh, drive doesn't go through either of the ones with arrows. It actually is right here between the two with arrows. Very nice. So I couldn't have, uh, I could not have messed that up even if I tried. <clears throat> Next step. Long hard drive cable. The long hard drive cable... Let me, let me get you some zoom on that bad boy, because that's, that's a little bit more complicated. The long hard drive cable, okay. You need more light, too. Give me some more light. Bonk. Okay. Long hard drive cable goes here. It goes to this first connector. This, If you're looking at it with this perspective, with the fan over here, this is the left connector with the battery at the top. Left connector here. Okay, slide in. It can be kind of hard, but you flip it up and down. It's a flip lock type connector. And that's that. Okay, and we can probably go ahead and put the hard drive back in as well. Put the drive in drop it in place and that way this gets stuck down uh, it looks like we have made a mistake here it needs to be flat there's actually a bend right here to accommodate the uh... yeah i think the other drive comes in here and smushes it up so i'm not a hundred percent sure how that works <clears throat> let's leave it not sticking for now all right, second cable goes over it. Huh. Drive two, ironically. Um, over here to the other side. Same type of flip lock connector here. There we go. Uh, it actually turns out there's some kind of adhesive going on there. The CMOS battery's in my way. And I think this one goes under that one, maybe? Let's find out for sure. Uh, I don't know that it matters, really, but... No, it goes on top. It has to go on top. It's physically impossible for it to not go on top. So I'm betting that this is in some kind of raid configuration, which is both neat and terrifying. So let's get this drive in and let it smash that cable in whatever is the most natural manner. CMOS battery on top of both. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Can you see that? Because if you can't see that, there you go. So we have numbers one and two are here, and the CMOS is sitting on top of both of them. All right, good. Now, come back. So at this point, 
all the screws have been put back all the drives pretty sure I didn't miss any connectors make sure this speaker wire here is not gonna get chopped off by anything I'm gonna pack it under and up uh, actually it looks like there is one screw missing where did that go I wonder how did I lose a screw well, maybe I shouldn't ask that question I'm sure I put it somewhere I shouldn't have that's just the sort of thing I do I wonder if there's anything where I put a screw and I'm not supposed to have put a screw eh. you know what though that one screw being missing isn't gonna be a big deal but let me see these are a little long I have screws from another computer over here a computer that I salvaged the screws from they'll never be needed again maybe just maybe this screw here will go in here and not cause any major problems who knows I worry though that it's too long and I feel like it may be too long Can we have a shorter screw is there a shorter screw available somewhere what about this smaller shaft yeah a smaller shaft isn't gonna help so no I don't I don't think I have a suitable replacement let's check the lengths yeah, when you do this this laptop screw stuff that yeah yeah that's too short okay all right so better to not um, try to be a bit too zealous there although does this work this actually looks like it could be a hard drive screw of some sort but I don't know that works that works that's hey I'm not gonna complain all right get this plate snapped back down all right okay make sure all the stinking clips are down put this back here now with any of these epoxy resins any of these uh, plastic welding or whatever liquids they usually take a day to cure they harden fairly quickly um, but they can take a long time to cure and they're not full strength until they do and because the hinges in this thing seem to be very strong I am NOT going to open this computer for a while um, if the customer gets it today they'll be okay so it's one o'clock and I close at five so I think what I'm going to do with this is let it just sit here for a few hours and cure give the computer a general checkup uh, once that's done so I can be sure I don't break the hinges I just fixed and uh, that'll be it that's an HP 17 uh, Envy 17 T disassembly with all kinds of cool stickers I like this one I like the skull anyway have a wonderful day thanks for watching you know that whole like share comment subscribe go to jodybruchon.com and give me money um the works and look at that that's all bent up this is it's so mangled like, but it's it's structurally it's fine so i ain't too worried about it it'll work and that's all that i care about have a good one take care